All right, so I'm blown away by update 2.1. It's actually even bigger than we initially thought. It seems that CD Projekt Red just went full in with 2.1 and I call it the immersion update. However, it does so much more than that. We're going to take a look at some of the secret animations added, some cool new items, new vehicles, new tricks, and some intense battles against Adam Smasher. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. So let's jump right in. Now, obviously, the big highlight here is the expanded romance options. Basically, every single apartment and every single love interest can be called at these apartments. There are many interactions, including tons of secret ones. You can simply hit them up via messaging and you can call them at any existing apartment, assuming that you already bought one. Now, the way this plays out is slightly different depending if you are already at the location or not. So if you are inside of the apartment, all you have to do is to just wait for a bit and then you're going to hear them knocking at the door and you can go ahead and let them inside. There's also an alternative. So if you tell them to go at a location, you can just meet them there and they will already be inside, kind of doing their business, sitting by the couch, watching TV or even playing at your computer. Yes, that's totally a thing. Now, what I immediately noticed is that they don't just sit there. They aren't stationary. In fact, they will move often and especially when you also move. So let's say you go, for example, to take a look out the window or go to the other side of the apartment or maybe go to a bathroom break. They will actually come close or in the general vicinity of that area and they will linger around interacting with you, asking questions and all of that. 100% this is 10 out of 10 from me on the immersion side this is way way better than i initially anticipated and it definitely brings a whole new dynamic to these characters and speaking of a whole new dynamic you don't just get to watch them do stuff you can interact with them so obviously you saw the scene in which you can um just hold your loved one on your knees you can totally do so with panem with judy i assume with river too though i never romance that character there are multiple other animations too and interactions for example you can just burst into dancing and they will accompany you which i find really interesting you will generally see these interactable you know like options in the environment when it happens um you can also sit by the window and you're gonna have your character or your romance um the loved ones okay. just coming by and watching with you but i've noticed a few secret ones so just to name a few if you go by the window judy jumps and kind of does this jump scare a little bit but not really it's really sweet and it's really cute another one is that if you take showers yes they will absolutely join you so um i'm gonna just like blur some things out over here because i don't want to get demonetized but uh it totally happens with all characters and they will also change attires once they get out of the shower and speaking of that they can also sleep in your bed and you can wake up with them by your side give them a kiss and all of that so uh um, yeah, if you don't have a girlfriend, I'm not sure what to tell you, but you can totally simulate that in Cyberpunk now. Uh, and of course, at the end of it, they are going to leave you some presents and some messages over there. Again, totally check them out. They are worth it. But like I said, we have some brand new toys to play around with and one of them is the brand new Porsche 911. So this might appear purchasable from the autofixer, but that's not how you get it. You first need to read the message from El Capitan, which is going to bring you to this abandoned parking lot right here, where you will yet again encounter a Johnny Silverhand lookalike, as well as looting the GPS coordinates of his body to that vehicle I was talking about. This is going to bring you nearby. There are some, you know, scabs in here that you have to take down. But once you do that, you're going to be able to just claim that vehicle for you. And it's absolutely incredible. So of course, it's the Cabriolet version, but it also looks way better than the default 911. So this is probably going to be my go-to vehicle from this point on. And it's all around amazing. Plus, by the way, there's a new feature which lets you set a vehicle as favorite in the vehicle summons menu. So now if there's one very down the list, you can bring it at the top by just uh, making it your favorite. This works for multiple vehicles at the same time, by the way. And speaking of new vehicles, we have five new bikes, like I said, a couple of arches, a couple of Kusanagis and one more extra on top. So starting with the arches, we have the Kobolo. This is like in the middle of the pack, but it looks really nice. Has that Oni pink helmet in the front. There's a slightly better version of it, which is the Molina. Has a bit more horsepower and in my opinion, the color scheme just looks a lot cooler 
Then we have the two Kusanagis, including this more barebone Peacekeeper that, of course, has better horsepower than the previous two, but um, it's a lot more like basic. And then we have the most powerful of the new five motorcycles, which is the Mashira. So this has the highest horsepower and also looks really, really cool. Um, you can, of course, go with any of them, but there's also one final, which is the Apollo. You likely saw this in a number of locations as you could just steal it in the city. Well, now we can finally own it. However, it's going to be on the slower side. So I believe this is one of the slowest motorcycles in the game but it also looks really really nice now alongside these bikes we also have the cool new tricks this includes the wheelie and i guess well that front stop so on the keyboard and mouse you're going to be able to do a wheelie by just holding down control and then accelerating which is going to shift your center of mass in the back so this is going to let you just to lift your um, your front wheel as such gain more speed and also do these cool tricks however if you press shift this is going to make a v as you can see kind of just um, lift itself a bit up and then lean in the front so this is going to help a ton in tight corners if you want to do a quick um, corner cut for example you can just press um, the brake plus shift which is now going to give you a lot more control in these situations so very helpful when planning escapes however if you jump from very high places you can use this to do air tricks so pressing control will let you do backflips as long as you press that button and still have height, you're going to be able to do it continuously. However, keep in mind that you can still crash and absolutely burn into the ground if you hit and face plant the earth. And the same goes with shift. You can do a front flip instead, which can also become quite intense with the physics engine of this game. So uh, be careful with the angle that you uh, take there. Oh, and by the way, you can totally use the wheelie to more easily go up ramps and very steep mountains, for example. This is going to reduce some of that drag and just, like, make it a lot easier to climb them without, like, falling or going back or losing any of that speed. Now, finishing off with a couple of new items, we have two more cyber implants. This includes the Phoenix and then there's also the Kogero Lattice. So one is for the skeleton system and the second one for the integumentary system. However, both of them are generally for net runners. So the first one is going to give you a massive 250% RAM regen rate when you go at a low RAM essentially. And the second one does the same at low RAM except that it gives you a massive boost to armor so this can help a ton with net running so you don't have to sacrifice these slots for otherwise useless implants now i did go ahead and test this so for example just judging by the numbers i have by default normally i have a 29 percent ram recovery rate and then a 911 armor without doing anything so when i bring my a total ram below well one in this case you will see that my recovery rate jumped to 66 percent so that's more than double just like how it showed on the tooltip however the armor only went up by about 134 so from 911 to 1045 and i believe that's because it takes into account only your base armor value not the full armor value which would have made it a lot better, but I guess for balancing reasons, I can see why CD Projekt Red chose to only take into account your base armor levels. That, or maybe it's a bug, but uh, for now, it's one of the best options for us. Let's keep on going, though, and there are some other things in here that you're going to notice. Obviously, if you read the end cart message, you're going to get the key, which is going to be useful to ride the new mattress system, of which you will see all the 19, um, well, stations all around the map you can immediately go to them and take a train ride the change here is that you're going to notice that now it's split in two so one side with red is departures and the other side with green is embarking now inside of the stations and inside of the trams themselves you're going to be able to like just have these really interesting um, new interactions of sorts obviously johnny silverhand will be there and he will actually react to the environment so if npcs sit maybe on his face because he's still basically a hologram um yeah he's going to just move away and not let them do that obviously he will um, not like it you can also move around check outside the window even like lift yourself and go by um, holding one of these bars and take a look out of 
um, the main door. There are many interactions here that you can do and lots of NPCs that you will hear discussing at some point even interacting with you i did go ahead and also tried glitching on the new tracks they definitely seem to be rendered however there are some invisible walls here though you will see those cards going by and i think that it's much better this time around i did eventually manage to clip into one of these um, train stations there are npcs over there but i'm pretty sure you could already do this in the previous patches too um, one more thing I did notice is that you can also scan NCPD or well NC citizens and you will notice their real names which I don't think we ever had before. But let's keep on going with some more quality of life changes and one of the biggest things is that CD Projekt Red finally made companion NPCs run with you in missions so instead of having to skip frames and whatnot you can just sprint now and all of your companions will also sprint alongside with you so a really nice touch in there to just help you navigate better and this happens both outside as well as in interiors um also one more thing that was also discussed in the patch notes is that gangs will take revenge on you so for example i betrayed the maelstroms once again and what happened is that not two days after this they immediately started packing heat and chasing me down let me tell you they are absolutely relentless so you can have one even two vehicles maybe more chasing you down the streets and the highway and they will absolutely attack you until the bitter end now, I also attacked some of them on foot and I did notice there are some new enemy elites over here, like for example, the ones with the Mantis Blades. If you ever installed any mods that already affected these, they were part of those mods too, but it seems CD Projekt Red already implemented them fully in the game, which um, again, huge props to them. Um, there's one more thing that I didn't notice right here very close to all foods. So as you may or may not know, the rest of the city, especially going in Japantown, is restricted before the pickup mission. Well, now in 2.1, we have these blockades that are there protected by the NCPD as well as some Militech agents and you simply cannot pass them anymore. At least I was not able to. So not only they will absolutely one shot you and completely destroy you right away, even if you try going beneath the bridge, yeah, the game is still going to turn you back. So it seems that this might prevent some of the um, pushing to level 50 exploits we had before. And also on the highway above, which by the way was now finished, also before the heist mission, you're going to still see the blockade. So you will have to finish that and come back later. There's an even bigger blockade here that will absolutely mow you down. Here's, for example, after the game was done, you can see that the blockades are absolutely gone, both in the same spot as well as on the big highway this brings us to my highlight my favorite highlight in fact and adam smasher is now definitely worthy of his title so now he has a lot of new phases more hp and a lot more devastating attacks so one of the newest is of course that karanzikov he's going to use it very often it's very dangerous and by the way it totally works even if you activated your own karanzikov so he's going to just move just as fast as you do, maybe even a little bit faster since technically he's, he's better. So this is a complete reenactment of the anime, which I am all up for. Um, he also does more rocket launcher attacks. For example, he has these uh, ground ones that will auto track you and they will absolutely obliterate you. It seems that in the first phase, he spams this the most often. Um, he also tends to jump a lot either away or towards you, just in general being very annoying and trying to take you down with rockets too. Now, eventually at lower HP values, you're going to notice him summoning new types of adds. So for example, I noticed this bigger brute guy that I really thought initially was his older self version, you know, the same Adam Smasher version from Johnny Silverhand's memories. Well, it's actually just a different guy out there, but um, totally dangerous. Um, and then there's also the fact that at like 20% HP, he just collapses all the pillars and then immediately summons a barrage of rockets. If I didn't have all of my survivability and regen skills, I would have been completely destroyed. Now, moving on, there are two more things I do want to cover. So one of them is that CD Projekt Red added these binoculars in various high points in the city that you can access to just look at, um, well, Night City and admire it from very far away, as well as the 2D car laws, which even to this day look very, very bad. But hey, at least they added a bit more immersion. And finally, there's one more thing I didn't notice, which is the fact that I guess the loading screens 
have some new additions i'm not sure i have ever seen this one before but um it's definitely new to me i finished phantom liberty but never saw this who knows maybe i skipped over that mission but let me know down below if this was ever in the game before anyway this is about it with the all new additions as well as the secret ones let me know down below which ones are your favorite and if you encountered anything new that i haven't covered in this video in the meantime thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one